Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to our Wednesday prophetic experience. I'm Minister Josette Dingle, campus pastor for Kingdom Experience International Virginia, our South Hill campus, and we would like to welcome you to our broadcast this evening. We are under the leadership of the Reverend Dr. Keisha DeCosta Ford, our apostle, and we welcome all of you to this broadcast and tonight we're going to talk about the pain perf passion and perfection of vision pain passion and perfection of vision let's just have a quick word of prayer heavenly father we thank you oh god for your grace your mercy your goodness and your kindness towards us oh god and your faithfulness towards us now god as we go into this time of your word god speak to hearts oh god and, and during this holy week season oh god open our eyes in the spirit as always we pray oh god that we would see marvelous things in your law give us ears to hear what you're saying in the spirit god Touch hearts and touch lives. Change us through the power of your word. And we will bless you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Talking about the pain, passion, and perfection of vision. Uh, this is Holy Week. And this particular topic tonight is, 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 is going to follow the, the Holy Week trek, if you will. I'm going to talk about Jesus from the triumphal entry to the resurrection. As we go into to, to, to Holy Week, uh, we've, we've, we've been talking about, you know, last Sunday was Palm Sunday with the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem and the people crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And, and those who were, 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 were confused and, and asking, who is this? And the thing about vision that we must remember is that Jesus had a vision, okay? He's the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And when he entered onto the scene of time as a baby, he had a vision always before him of Calvary. Praise the Lord. So he always had a vision. So whatever you see Jesus doing throughout the, the Gospels, he, he was doing it with the vision of Calvary in mind. And as we go through the triumphal entry and he makes his way through the crowd and, and he makes his way to the temple to overturn uh, the money changers temple, uh, tables we see him with the vision of Calvary ever before him good evening minister Bradford and then we we, we follow Jesus's final days and and his final teachings and his interactions with the Pharisees and 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 final words of comfort to the disciples and he had been telling them all along what the piece of the vision was that that I you know I've came into the earth that I have to go to Calvary to redeem mankind and he he tried to explain and prepare the disciples for 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 what was to come but oftentimes they missed the lessons he was trying to tell them but Jesus continually had a vision okay he had he had a passion for the vision as he did his three and a half years of ministry and in, in his final week you know as he talked with the Pharisees and he he he, he healed the, the 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 people that he healed and he interacted and he went through the the Last Supper and he gave instructions on the Holy Spirit and he instructed the disciples to receive the Holy Spirit don't reject the Holy Spirit I've got a vision of Calvary but I'm gonna leave you with the Holy Spirit I'm not going to leave you comfortless I'm not going to leave you alone because he had a vision of Calvary and when when you have a vision and when you have passion and oftentimes you know we 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 have a vision that God has given us and and it goes through stages just as Jesus had to endure uh, the pain of Calvary and, and his passion uh, during these final days, uh, we see that his, his vision was ever focused on Calvary, even though he stood in the garden and prayed, you know, Father, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, thou will be done. You know, he, he was in agony, the Bible recounts, you know. And, and when you have a, a God vision, okay, a God vision will bring passion and it will bring some pain. But there is also the perfection of vision. Jesus had to go through betrayal. You know, one of the 12 betrayed him, Judas, you know, for 30 pieces of silver. 
you know and and but this did not detract Jesus and it should not detract us from from following the vision and pursuing the vision that God gives us you know even though friends walk away and things change and life changes there's a vision that God expects us to to fulfill and walk out we can't stop because somebody said something or walked away or whatever but you know those things will, will come we talked about last week the sand bullets and the Tobiases that constantly nag at you and and try to tear you down in the midst of pursuing the vision that God has for you you know and then we see Jesus uh, during his trial you know mocked spit upon are you the son of God you know if you're so powerful you know why don't you why don't you why don't you handle the situation and we see him you know being mocked of the people and rejected by the people and even Peter denied knowing him but this did not deter Jesus from pursuing the vision of God and when these things happen in our own lives, we must be like our example, Jesus, and pursue after the vision all the more harder. You know, Jesus, at one point, the scripture recounts him standing before the, 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 the judges and, and the Sanhedrin and all those people. And, he, and, and the Bible says he opened not his mouth because he knew what the vision was. He knew what the culmination of the vision he had was. And just like Jesus, when we have a vision, we've got to know what the end is and we've got to know where God is taking us in the midst of that vision. And we sometimes got to shut our mouth and stand still and pursue after the vision and be consistent in pursuing after the vision. We don't quit, we don't stop. Even though we know pain is coming, persecution is coming. But we're going through this and we're going to finish this vision and we're going to work out the God vision that has been given to us. We know it's going to look different. We know it's going to look out of the box of our norm. But we're going to pursue the vision that God has for us. And then there's crucifixion and death. And sometimes it seems like our vision dies. You know, things don't work out like we thought they would. This didn't come through. This, this, this person left or whatever. But, you know, there's a crucifixion that takes place. First, there's a crucifixion of our flesh, okay? That God has to kill our flesh in order to get us to align with his vision. It's not our vision that we're pursuing. It's God's vision. If you're pursuing another vision, you need to check yourself. When you're pursuing God's vision, there's going to be some crucifixion. First of our flesh, then of our ideas of our own making and the things that we, we, we bring into the, to the situation, those things have to be crucified in order that God's vision will be brought forth and birthed and flourish. And we know that Jesus went all the way through crucifixion, all the way. And we have to pursue just like Jesus d during uh, crucifixion. He, he, he didn't come down off the cross even though they mocked him and said, Look, if you saw the God, come down off that cross. We know the story. You know? But he remained on the cross even though they mocked him and laughed at him and, and, and did all manner of evil things against him while he's hanging on the cross. He pursued the vision. You know, a piece of the vision was was giving entrance into paradise to to a, a, a sinner man as he hung on the cross. This day you shall be with me in paradise, fulfilling the vision even till the last breath. Some of y'all in two days, you will be doing seven last words and the final words. Jesus said it is finished. When he said it is finished, that means this piece of the vision that God has given me to do, to, to fulfill, is complete. This piece of that vision. So when you've got a vision from God, yeah, crucifixion comes. And the pain of crucifixion, you know, and some things die off. And some people walk away. But you've got to pursue the vision that God has given you with everything in you. We notice that Jesus did not come down off that cross. He went all the way. It is finished. He uttered his last breath and gave up the ghost, as scripture declares. And then there's resurrection. You know, three days in the tomb and, and the third day he rose again. And God will resurrect your vision. You think it might be dead. You think it, it might be over. You think the tomb is closed forever. You think the enemy is won. But no, no, no. You've got to go to the third day and see the vision of God in your life be completed and fulfilled. You've got to go all the way. Resurrection cometh. 
for your vision, for the God vision that God has put in your heart. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but some of you got a vision and you've let it die and you think it's over. And God is saying the vision ain't over yet. Wait till resurrection. Hang in there till resurrection. Don't give up. Don't walk away. Stay in the fight. Resurrection cometh. So I just want to give you this verse out of Hebrews chapter 12, which is our apostles' favorite book. Hebrews 12, 2 and 3. And it says this in the King James. Wherefore, seeing we are also in, in, are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so doth easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher. You've got to finish of our faith, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God, at the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. The pain, passion, and perfection of vision. You've got to endure. You've got to despise the shame. And you've got to see the perfection of God's vision in your life. Be blessed. We thank you for joining us uh, over the next few weeks in way of announcements. Uh, the prophetic experience, will you'll be seeing some different faces on uh, the prophetic experience on Wednesdays as I'm taking a little bit of a break for a little while. But we'll continue with the word and with the fire of God. We thank you for watching us. And if you have any questions, comments, please, you can join us here on Facebook Messenger. Contact us here on Facebook Messenger with your questions and comments. Also, the notes for this entire se session on vision, this entire teaching on vision will be posted on Facebook. So if you need the notes and you need the scriptures, please uh, check back in through the comment section and the link to the notes and the scriptures for the entire teaching on vision will be posted we look forward to seeing you on a sunday for resurrection sunday we're gonna have all of the ministers of kingdom experience international bringing a brief word we're gonna have communion and we're gonna rejoice in resurrection sunday looking forward to seeing you at 9 30 right here on the church facebook page on the kei facebook page for resurrection sunday at 9 30 for communion bring a friend tell a friend uh, we look forward to, to seeing you during the week on one of our other experiences, Monday through Thursday. Hope you uh, catch a word from God. Hope you catch some breath from God to infuse you during the week as we go through this Holy Week season. We look forward to, 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 to joining with you on your faith journey. And may God ever bless you and heaven smile upon you. Amen. <music>